Hi, I'm Keith Jacobus, the superintendent of the South Washington County School District, and welcome to another edition of Promoting Instructional Excellence. Today, I'd like to wrap up our Undercover Boss segments. We have two more segments to bring to you today and show you what our professionals do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'd like to start first with the time I spent at Oltman Middle School in a science classroom run or taught, I should say, by Callie Chenault. When I went in that day, uh, the class was going to do a lab, a simulation of the water cycle. So students were actually put into groups as raindrops. And part of the learning of the water cycle is, is where the water goes throughout the, the earth and how the cycle works. And for example, you may be in a, a glacier for a number of years. And so there were dice that we utilized to move around. And I was able to come in and actually participate in the lab, which was great fun. And then in talking with uh, Ms. Chenault, she has a uh, great passion for science and very excited about helping her kids really think through problems and try to, to look at real life experiments and problems in science that her kids could tackle at the middle school level hopefully igniting that passion for lifelong learning, not only as for all learning, but also in the science classroom. So why don't we uh, take a look at, at Ms. Chenault's classroom, and uh, I think you'll find the excitement uh, palatable. Hi, I'm with Callie Chenault, and she is a, a science teacher at Altman Middle School. So I had the great fortune of spending some time with her this morning in her earth science class as we learned about the water cycle. So Callie, I'm just curious on um, how you decided to become a teacher and, and how long you've been teaching here at Altman. All right. Um, I originally thought I actually wanted to be a research scientist. I went to college um, as a biology major at Bryn Mawr um, and had dreams of being a research scientist until I did research my senior year of college, at which point I discovered I did not actually like doing research. Um, so I took a little time off to think about things and realized that what I really liked doing was working in the intro bio lab as a TA and um, teaching other people about science. And so then I went back and got an elementary license originally. Um, I worked at Pullman for six years. And then when sixth graders moved to the middle school, I came to Altman. So this is my fifth year here. And what's the best part about teaching middle school kids? You never know what to expect. <laughs> I think every day something new happens. Every hour something new happens. So it's always fun. And so as, as far as your time at the elementary level or the middle school level, do you plan to stay as a middle school science teacher? I do think I will stay as a middle school science teacher. Um, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to come up with different new things to do with them. Um, this year has been a real challenge with the new technology, but also um, has had lots of really neat opportunities. So, Well, tell us, how, how do you keep yourself up to, with the new um, findings in science along with the iPads? What have you done this year to help prepare for class? Um, I've spent some time looking for just things like apps that have to do with different science topics to try to come up with different ways to teach them. Um, I try, I follow a whole bunch of science things on Twitter, and I actually have just recently started retweeting to, um, I believe I have nine student followers, but I'm retweeting things from like Discover Magazine and things like that. Um, so just sort of staying up on what's going on in, I guess, popular science, but a little deeper than that. Um, and just always trying to find ways to make things more engaging for students. Earth science is unfortunately probably one of the harder things for a lot of them to get excited about. Um, Rocks are not maybe every kid's favorite thing. They love life science because they love learning about their own bodies. Um, but finding ways to engage them. Great. So as far as uh, earth science and field trips, I heard you talk a little bit about you went to an IMAX film. And, and what are some of the other enrichment activities that you look at each year? Um, for tying into earth science, that really has been the biggest one that we have done. Um, I've thought about going fossil hunting, and we've never done it, and then after the events that happened last year, it sort of put it on the back burner for me. Um, so I'm, we went to an IMAX to learn more about climate change. That was also a way we could um, tie both sixth and, or not sixth, seventh and eighth grade curriculum together into one field trip. Um, so that's really the biggest thing we've done so far. I'd like to look to doing more field trips out into the community. Um, we, go out, we just go out back and looked at the weather, things like that. So in general, what's your favorite part about teaching and what keeps you in the profession? Because with your knowledge and science background, you could do a number of things. Why do you stay in teaching? Hanging out with 14-year-olds keeps me young. Um, I think is probably it is that 
like, as I said, every day there's something new happening. Um, it's a chance to not just look at science, to also look at how is this tied to math? What are the social implications of this? Um, I'm a big fan of pointing out the Greek and Latin roots in different words. So it's kind of a way to keep a finger into all those different things. Um, and really just that there's always something new to do. So we saw a lesson that they graphed their data and you started to ask them questions about why the data means what it does. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow will you follow up with them? And, and, and I'm, what I'm leading to is I'm impressed with the thinking that you want your kids to do and, and um, what will you do with them tomorrow? Um, next class, we will follow up with looking at some of, looking more closely at their data and talking some more about that. And then um, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at ocean currents. And so those drops of water that stayed in the ocean for all 10 rounds or whatever, um, why are they in the ocean so long? Are they always in the same part of the ocean? And then look at global climate to sort of wrap that up and loop us back around to our weather. And I've had them doing um, weather observations for a week, so we're going to look at that information too. Well, I know it was difficult to have us in class. I really appreciate you inviting us in. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. Thanks so much. Glad you had fun.